please welcome U.S. Trade Representative Ambassador Catherine Tai. All right. It's great to be here with all of you. Good afternoon. Um, I wanted to, on behalf of the Biden-Harris administration, underscore how important our engagement with tribal and indigenous communities is, especially as we continue to shape more inclusive and fairer trade policies. As the United States trade representative, it is important to note for all of you how often I reflect on the fact that a people of traders at the water's edge was the meaning of the name of the original inhabitants of the land on which we are assembled for today's summit. Our nation's story on trade begins with all of you and your communities. Your ancestors were our first traders. From pelts to food and so much more, Trade among tribes was vibrant and flourishing here well before the arrival of European colonizers. It was a sustaining, driving way of life. And this legacy is particularly significant for our approach to US trade policy under President Biden and Vice President Harris. Now, for the first time in our agency's history, we at USTR are actively and intentionally working to ensure that the dignity, priorities, and well-being of the world's first and original traders are reflected as we craft a new story here on trade and investment policy. We know that our economy is more than just numbers, even though oftentimes it feels like when we talk about our economy, it's just a bunch of numbers. Our economy is actually made up of people, and that is why we need to make sure that our economy works for our people. Not only for those that know the ins and outs of trade policy making and Washington DC, but especially for those that have been traditionally not heard or seen. And this is at the heart of how we are building our economy, as the president says, from the middle out and from the bottom up, and ensuring that more people across our society get their fair share of the economic pie that we are all making. I am proud to say that the president's trade policy agenda and annual report now include unprecedented objectives and updates on engaging with tribal nations, tribal colleges and universities, native and indigenous community-based organizations, academia, entrepreneurs, and enterprises. Not only must you claim your rightful seat at the table, your voices must help shape our work. And that is why at my agency, USTR, we have made it a priority to hear directly from tribal nations to meet you where you are, to hear your concerns, and to learn from you. One of the first actions that I took after being confirmed as US Trade Representative was to host tribal consultations with tribal leaders in what many believe were the first ever in USTR's 60-year history. They are now an annual standard. And this is really important because our approach to trade is grounded in equity, fairness, and respect. If done right, trade can be a force for good to empower working families and underserved communities. In our tribal consultation meetings and discussions, we have learned so much from you. We are reminded of the importance of acknowledging and resurrecting traditional trade practices and economies and the challenges of operating in today's global economy. So our way of honoring this rich history is to put you front and center of our trade policy making. We sought and appointed indigenous experts to serve as cleared advisors on our trade advisory committees. This is a first step 
to better inform our approach when we engage with other economies, including in the Indo-Pacific, the Western Hemisphere, and Africa. As a hallmark moment for our host year for the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation, or APEC meetings in San Francisco last month, I was deeply honored to convene the first ever minister-level dialogue with indigenous leaders. And I was very honored that uh, Chief Malerba, who's sitting in the front row here, uh, was a part of that convening and could speak directly to my trade minister counterparts from Asia. I also want to note that the minister statement from APEC this year includes specific mentions of indigenous peoples as an important part of realizing equitable economic growth, which it turns out isn't just a goal for us, but is a goal of other countries and economies as well. We are also continuing to work with the US International Trade Commission to better understand how trade policies and trade might impact our tribal communities and native and indigenous workers. The USITC's investigation revealed, first of all, that we need better and more disaggregated data and research. So we are partnering with our interagency colleagues across the administration to change that and to improve that. Influenced by your voices, USTR is also working with colleagues across the US government to explore how trade tools and trade rules may better address issues like misappropriation of indigenous goods and capacity building for native entrepreneurs and workers. I would also like to note that the United States greatly appreciates the work that is happening among partners of uh, the Indigenous Peoples Economic and Trade Cooperation Arrangement, or the IPETCA. Thanks to your guidance to us at USTR, the United States announced that we are actively and eagerly exploring becoming an observer to that agreement. Our entire administration is fully committed to using trade as a force for good for indigenous workers everywhere. And just as native heritage and culture are foundational to our nation's identity and fabric, we are committed to lifting up native voices as foundational pillars of our work going forward. It is an honor to be here with you today. I look forward to getting to know more and more of you and to continuing to build our work together. Thank you so much for your partnership.